I drew it from its china tomb, it came out feebly scented with some thin ghost of past perfume that dust and days had lent it. An old, letter, folded still. To read with due composure, I saw the sunlit window sill, above the grey enclosure, that glimmering in the sultry haze, faint flowered, dimly shaded, slumbered like goldsmith's madam blaze, bedizened and brocaded. A queer old place. You d surely say some tea board garden maker had planned it in Dutch William Estate to please some florist Quaker, so trim it was. The yew trees still, with pious care perverted, grew in the same grim shapes, and still the lipless dolphin spurted, still in his wonted state abode the broken nosed Apollo, and still the cypress arbor showed the same umbrageous hollow. Only, as fresh young beauty gleams from coffee colored laces, so peeped from its old fashioned dreams the fresher modern traces, for idle mallet, hoop, and ball upon the lawn were lying, a magazine, a tumbled shawl, round which the swifts were flying, and, tossed beside the gelder rose, a heap of rainbow knitting, where, blinking in her pleased repose, a Persian cat was sitting, a place to love in, live, for I, if we too, liked it onus, could find some god to stretch the grey scant life the fates have thrown us. But now by steam we run our race, with buttoned heart and pocket, our love as a gilded, surplus grace, just like an empty locket. The time is out of joint. Who will, may strive to make it better, for me, this warm old window sill, and this old dusty letter. To dear John, the letter ran, it can t, can t be, for father s gone to chorily fare with Sam, and mother s storing apples, brewing me up to our elbows making dams and jam. But we shall meet before a week is gone, t is a long lane that has no turning, John. Only till Sunday next, and then you ll wait behind the white thorn, by the broken stile we can go round and catch them at the gate, all to ourselves, for nearly one long mile, dear Prue one t look, and father he ll go on, and Sam s two eyes are all for sissy, John, John, she s so smart, with every ribbon new, flame colored sack, and crimson potasoy as proud as proud, and has the vapors too, just like my lady, calls poor Sam a boy, and vows no sweetheart has worth the thinking on till he has passed thirty I know better, John. My dear, I don't he think that I thought of much before we knew each other, I and you, and now, why, John, your least, least finger touch, gives me enough to think a summer through sea, for I send you something, there, d is gone. Look in this corner. Mind you find it, John. Five these was the matter of the note, a long forgot deposit, dropped in an Indian dragon's throat, deep in a fragrant closet, piled with a dapper Dresden world, bow, beauties, prayers, and poses, bonzes with squat legs undercurled, and great jars filled with roses ah, heart that wrote. Ah, lips that kissed, you had no thought or presage into what keeping you dismissed your simple old world message. A reverent one. Though we today distrust beliefs and powers, the artless, ageless things you say are fresh as May's own flowers, starring some pure primeval spring, ere gold had grown despotic, ere life was yet a selfish thing, or love a mere exotic. I need not search too much to find whose lot it was to send it, that feel upon me yet a kind, soft hand of her who penned it, and see, through two score years of smoke, in bygone, quaint apparel. Shine from yon time black Norway oak the face of Patience Carol, the pale, smooth forehead, silver tressed, the grey gown, primly flowered, the spotless, stately quaff whose crest like Hector's horse plume towered, and still the sweet half solemn look where some past thought was clinging, as when one shuts a serious book to hear the thrushes singing. I kneel to you. Of those you were, whose kind old hearts grow mellow whose fair old faces grow more fair as point and Flanders yellow, whom some old store of garnered grief, their placid temples shading, crowns like a wreath of autumn leaf with tender tints of fading. Peace to your soul. You died unwed despite this loving letter. And what of John? The less that s said of John, I think, the better. 